Today we're going to discuss two approaches to preparedness apparel. One is a more discreet gray man look, and the other is a more militant looking tactical style. Both of these have their merits depending on the situation, so let's talk about it. Now the gray man approach is one in which a person tries to dress and behave in a manner which draws the least amount of negative attention towards them. For example, I once knew a homeless person who has now unfortunately passed away. I wanted to buy them a brand new fancy tactical backpack to replace the torn and tattered pack that they had carried for years. To my surprise, he actually refused the backpack because he didn't want to attract the attention of thieves. This is the gray man mindset in a nutshell. Try to blend in and avoid negative attention, even if it means limiting yourself to certain types of gear or putting yourself in what appears to be a disadvantaged position. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about why I'm giving up my tactical badass approach, at least in an urban environment, and swapping them for a more gray man, plain clothes strategy. Well, that sure is a pretty little outfit you got on there, little lady. Where's the rest of it? This guy. Come on, man. Like, what are you overcompensating for? You know, from what I hear, there's plenty of girls to go around, even for guys who come up short in certain departments. You know what I mean? Well, that's a very predictably <laughs> effeminate perspective from my apparently unprepared protege here. The reason why you want to be tactical, number one, is because the gear is just way cooler. You're going to look really cool walking down the street in this kind of gear. Look at all the pockets I got. The functionality of my gear is far superior to his. I can attach different things to this backpack here. I have so many different pockets. And if I'm running down the street chasing bad guys, and I would never run from bad guys because I'm not this guy, even if I'm vastly outnumbered and they have more firepower, I'm going in headstrong. But I got pockets, okay, that have zippers on them that are gonna ensure that whatever I have on my person, I'm not gonna lose. So the best thing about this tactical look is the functionality. Well, I guess you have a point there, but I myself, prefer the element of surprise. I mean, take us for instance. We have the same DNA, we have the same capabilities and skills, yet you stand out like a sore thumb and I have the element of surprise. So in my opinion, I'm more tactically and strategically equipped to deal with situations I may face. What's that saying by Sun Tzu in The Art of War? Sometimes mm. avoiding a battle is winning one. Yeah, so, I so I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm going to be attracting that sort of negative attention, if you know what I mean. See, here's the thing. What's with this obsession with not having any attention on yourself? Look, when I walk down the street, I want people to part like the Red Seas out of fear and intimidation of yours truly. I want to be as unapproachable and as antisocial as possible just to minimize the possible threat. You see, when people see me, even if they're big, bad, tough guys, I naturally elicit a fear response because they've been conditioned to associate this type of dress with militant behavior and aggressive, manly, masculine behavior. So immediately when they see me, the first thought is resistance. The first thought is, I don't want to mess with that guy. And that's the kind of antisocial persona that I, for one, am very excited to project. Sure, but myself personally, I think that if you're in a non-combative environment, especially an urban environment where not everybody's all dressed up in military uniforms, it doesn't make too much sense to stand out like a sore thumb like that. Well, here's the thing though. If his approach is so effective, why don't all police 
dress like that? Why do police wear uniforms at all? Why don't they all just dress in plain clothes? You know, there's something to be said for the uniform and its communication that you are an authority figure that can elicit that sort of response, especially in a shit hits the fan situation where it might communicate to people that, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. Even if you may not know what you're doing, it might still communicate that. Now, some people might say that dressing like this might attract the attention of people who say, hmm, maybe that guy has lots of stuff. And maybe at some point down the road, if you don't have the backup to actually back this look up, that could be a consequence. But just like how most people don't know how to fight and are intimidated when they see grappling gloves, well, they're probably going to leave you alone for the most part, unless they get really, really desperate. And then they're going after him anyways. So you do have a point about not being intimidating and maybe that might even discourage the approach of some people of malintent, but I still think that it attracts more attention than it's worth. Another problem with his approach is that if there ever was a situation like that, people around him are gonna be seeking him for leadership and support and guidance in that situation because he's dressed the part. So keep in mind, if you're dressed like a soldier and war breaks out, and I'm not talking in a, a global country versus country sense, but just on the street, if war breaks out, people are gonna look to you for guidance, so you better be able to back it up. He may have the element of surprise, I'll give him that. But if you do happen to focus your attention on him, he's gonna look like an easier target than me. Think about it, if you were to see both of us walking down the street, who would you be more likely to mess with? While the whole philosophy of the gray man doesn't mean actually wearing gray like I'm doing today, even though in most situations that's probably gonna work because gray is a very inoffensive color that a lot of people don't pay attention to. But the whole point is to find the cultural baseline of the environment that you're in and try to approximate that to the best of your capability. So if you live uptown in a bunch of high rise buildings and everybody's wearing a tie, then the most gray man approach for you would be wearing a tie. Hopefully you're able to hide some survival tools inside that tie. In a knowingly actively hostile environment, it probably makes sense to dress like you're dressing because in that environment, people's guards are already going to be up. So the intimidation factor may actually override the gray man principle in that situation. But in a non-hostile environment, I think that how you're dressing is counterproductive because you're gonna be attracting unnecessary attention. People are going to always remember you as that guy who dresses like a military soldier. And in the case of a disaster, people might look to you as you resemble somebody who's in a position of authority. Don't get me wrong, there's certain environments that are non-combative where I think that sort of dress is actually going to be applicable. Like if you're you know, going out into the wilderness or something, having all those pockets and having that molly webbing and the modularity of the pack is definitely gonna come in handy. I just don't think it comes in handy for 90% of the environments that we find ourselves in. Even if you do live in a rural environment, you know, dressing like that, and I've come across many people back in my tactical days where I would cross them when I was hiking down a trail or something. I mean, you could tell that the manner in which I dressed affected them in some way, shape or form. You'll find that a lot of city slickers who do go out hiking in the woods and they shop at these uh, clothing stores that sell the, the higher end yuppie gear. Well, they tend to buy gear which is bright colors and there's nothing concealed or camouflage about it. They almost want to stand out. There's something to be said about that, especially if you're trying to get the attention of somebody for help. And myself personally, even in the wilderness, I'm switching over to higher vis gear that I can't lose. It's much better to have a knife with an orange handle that if you drop it, you're gonna be able to find it than one that looks really cool. And you know, maybe if you do have to go ramble in the woods, you're not gonna be spotted, that one off chance that that happens. But if you put that thing down for a second, you might end up wasting 15 minutes looking for it. So you really have to understand the environment you're in. There's a time and place for tactical, it's excellent gear which is truly military grade in terms of its ruggedness and durability but oftentimes it's unnecessary and in some ways even antisocial. 
Well, it looks like we're kind of at a stalemate here and we're not going to fully agree on things. But I would say that maybe in the future we're going to have to do some social psychological experiments to really see how people respond to people who dress like this and people who dress in more effeminate ways. All right, guys, so I have two backpacks here to show you today. This one I've been using for well over a year. This is the VanQuest Trident 32 backpack. Excellent backpack. I've been wearing it around everywhere for a year. And recently I decided, you know, I'm gonna change my approach. Maybe it's because I'm getting a little older now and I'm trying to keep more of a lower profile because, you know, the channel is getting bigger and I just don't want to stand out like a sore thumb anymore. Even though it's really cool and using backpacks like this that are incredibly rugged and durable and have so many great features and options. And honestly, this is still my go-to backpack when I'm in the wilderness or as a bug out bag, even in some situations, but as an everyday carry type backpack. Uh, this is my new everyday carry backpack. This is the VanQuest Adex 25, okay? You wouldn't be able to tell, but it's the exact same durability as this pack right here. Like in terms of the build quality, exactly the same. Once you get inside this pack, it starts to look a lot like this one. In fact, this one has a few more features that this one doesn't on the inside. So we can take a deeper look inside, but we're actually gonna save that for a future video. But I just wanted to provide you a video about the pros and cons of being the gray man and why I myself are moving over to this style of an I find that in most of your dealings throughout the day, in most cases, people want to be approachable, okay? You don't, you shouldn't, at least in my opinion, not want to be approachable. And my biggest problem with these kind of packs was that I did become that person. You start to look like you have a bit of an edge and people, you know, may just not want to come up and speak with you as much. And for some people, that's great. Now, again, I'm not throwing any shade on this backpack. And I think that there's some people who may still like sporting this around town. You know, I, I think it's an excellent backpack. I really do. I have nothing bad to say about the pack itself. For a combat scenario, I think this is absolutely a great pack. And you could make a compelling argument for a post-disaster crisis situation for reasons why you should carry this instead of this. There's that idea that just because somebody looks like a military badass that people are gonna think, oh, that guy has stuff and they're gonna go after him. Well, not necessarily. As I said in this video, a lot of people's knee-jerk reaction to people like that is gonna be one of resistance and apprehension. So the argument kind of works both ways. In some places, this may be camouflage. You know, if you're living in a small town and everybody's wearing backpacks, and let's be honest, everybody's gonna know each other anyways, but if you're living, you know, in a more rural environment where things like this are more common, then maybe this is gonna stand out more than this. Maybe you're just gonna look too city slicker if you sport something like this. So you have to understand the cultural baseline of where you live. Okay, you don't want to have uh, things that are gonna stand out, things that people are going to remember you by. And the reason for that is not that you're just going to accidentally commit a crime someday or something like that. It's just that you wanna be that guy who when people look at you, they don't stop to look at you, okay? Their eyes glaze right over you because there's nothing overly exciting or obtuse about your presence. There's nothing which stands out. There's no deviation from the cultural norm or the cultural baseline that you have that makes people want to look twice at you and want to pay attention to you. You just want to be that guy minding your own business, okay? And sometimes stuff like this gives you that edge and people of bad intent might be attracted to it. But in other cases, opportunistic predator types are going to be attracted to this type of address. So what do you guys think in the comment section below? Which pack would you prefer and for when? And like I said, I'm going to do a deep dive into this backpack with all its features in an upcoming video. And we might even do a giveaway as well. So stick around for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoy this video, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. 
My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.